there, Linda Goodall here. This is day three of my hatch trial, and today I'm once again reproducing something I've already digitized in another program. And this is to help me learn how to think and hatch. If you have experience with another program, reproducing things you've already done is a great way to get started because then you're not thinking about how do I digitize the design, you're just thinking about how do I make this using the tools that I have at hand. So this is an embossed monogram. It's designed to be stitched on towels. The original set was all done in Embrilliance, and in fact, I just finished them like two days before I got Hatch. So it's fresh in my mind. There is a video on how to do this in Embrilliance. I used a slightly different border. I drew my own border for this one. I wasn't happy with how the border came out in Embrilliance. But if you have that program, you can see how to do it there. And this is the one that I brought in. This is a DST file. You can see that it's a stitch file because it has like a bazillion pieces over here. But that was my original thing that I wanted to reproduce. So the first way I tried was with this W. And you can see my artwork. There's my little artwork piece there. And all I did was do a full manual process on there to get the exact same look and feel. Now you can see that I have two objects here for the grid fill, and all they are are light density tatamis going in opposing directions. And then we have this border, and then a path to get into the inner border, the inner border, and then we're going to jump out to the outer border. So yes, it's all manual, but there should be a way to do this more easily, don't you think? We can do this in Hatch, and we can make it look like this with pretty much no manual work. The only manual thing I did was that line. And if you can't do a straight line, <laughs> you're, you're in trouble. So let's see how I did this one. You'll notice that I only have one piece here instead of two. And this is because I used a motif fill. But once again, I have the satin borders, the running stitch line, the inner satin border, and then we jump to the outer satin border. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to switch back to this. I like a white background. I'm just used to working in a white background. And I do have a 4x4 four four hoop displayed. It says baby lock up here, but I just like to have a hoop displayed so I have a reference point. And I'm just going to work at this zoom level so that you can see what I'm doing. This is not, uh, we're not going to do anything really th that's going to cause us to have zoom problems on here. So we want to start with a shape. And there are shapes tucked away under the monogramming tab. And if you go up here to Borders and click Add, you can find shapes. And I'm going to pick, I'm just going to use that one again. I used that one before. It looked pretty good. And I'll click OK, and there it is. And it comes in as a satin border. And I want this to have a fill, so I'm going to select it and put a fill on it. But look, that didn't work. And what we have to do first before we can put a fill on it is to break it apart. So I'm going to break it apart, and then I'm going to select it. I'm going to put a fill on it. And we'll just leave it at Tatami because we're going to change that right away. I'm going to put a motif on there, and I'm going to pick from the black work. If I click that little button there, it'll pop open like a drawer where I can see them all. And I'm going to use this one because that'll give me that grid look. And that's a little too wide. It, actually, it's a lot too wide. So let's just change that. I'm going to change it to all threes. So we'll set our height and width to three. And we'll set our column and row spacing to three. And there's our grid. Now for the letter. So I'm going to go to lettering. And I used this true type Bookman old style. Now I did have to install this. This wasn't native on my computer, but you can download it from one of those free sites. And this is the same letter that I used in the other one, so that's why I want to keep it that way, because I wanted to keep it as close as possible. And let's set it to, oh, I don't know, 45 millimeters. That's a pretty good size. And they're all satin stitches, but we don't care, because we're going to get rid of all that stuff. And let's um, put it in the center there. And we're going to use this to make the hole in our grid background. 
Now we can't digitize a whole because it's already a shape, but we can do this other thing. So we'll go to Edit Objects, Remove Overlaps. And now we have a hole there. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but once I delete this, you can. So I'm on my way. Now we'll take that and we'll use the handy dandy Create Outlines and Offsets tool. I'm finding so much use for this. So I'm going to set my offset at zero and um, we'll just leave the rest at the defaults. And I'm going to get rid of some of these here. We don't need all of them. I'll figure out why that happens at some point in my adventure. I want to put a satin border on this and I want to put a satin border on that. And now I want to put um, another satin border out there. So I'm going to take this guy and we're going to do the create outlines again. And we're going to offset, I don't know, five millimeters. And if one of you knows why I get all these duplicates, tell me because I'm I haven't figured this out yet. So we'll put a satin border on that. Whoops, don't want to do that. And we'll delete these two guys. There's our design, but it's not very efficient. So we're going to do one little tiny manual thing here. I'm going to go down to digitize. I'm going to digitize an open shape. And I'm just going to pick some narrow point around here. That, that looks like a really nice short point there. I think I'll do it there. And I'm just going to make a little line and put a run stitch on it. And now I need to move it into place. But our design doesn't know what order I want to st stitch it in. It's still going to be jumping all over the place. You can see the little dashed lines all over the place. Well, Hatch makes that easy to clean up. So we're going to select all, control A. My fingers are still using learning Windows commands. And I'm just going to apply closest join. And that pretty much fixed everything. Our design's ready to test, so wasn't that quick? It's so easy. So I hope you found this technique useful, and I'll see you in the next video. And thanks for watching.